All right, ladies, let's talk about color. This is by far one of our most fun units and getting to know color and play around with color and learn about color theory is by far one of our favorite things to do in Design Basics. So let's start with the color wheel. This is very basic, so I'm guessing many of you have seen it before, but the color wheel is a tool we're gonna to start using in class. And the basic idea is that it's a way to help organize colors into predictable relationships. So it allows you to understand color harmonies and color theory. And there's multiple versions of the color wheel and some show simple relationships, some show complex relationships. So we're gonna work on the 12 step color wheel. This one here is six, it's so there's six different colors and we're gonna build up to a 12 step color wheel. So the first division is cool colors and warm colors. On the left side here, you can see that purple, blue, and green, they're all cool colors. And then red, orange, yellow, they're all warm colors. And we'll talk a little bit later in the semester about how those kind of interact with the eye and how our brain interprets those colors. So another thing I'm sure you've heard about, primary colors and secondary colors. Primary colors, red, blue, yellow. And the thing with primary colors are they cannot be created and they're always going to be equidistant from each other on the color wheel. So right now, they're all divided by one space. That's always equidistant. And all these primary colors, if you put them in different combinations, will make your secondary colors. And that's orange, purple, green. And that's essentially the basics of the color wheel. Now tertiary colors, that brings us to our 12-step color wheel. So we had six, and now we're gonna add six more. And the ones we're adding are basically all those spaces that were between our previous colors. So we had orange and red touching, now we have the middle blend, orange-red. We have red-violet, blue-violet, blue-green, yellow-green, yellow-orange. And you can notice that the way these colors are labeled, they're labeled with their basic hue name. So Red, and then red-violet, red goes first, it's a primary. And then blue-violet, because blue is a primary, so blue goes first. But there's no calling this like teal, no calling that magenta. Those are kind of invented names for colors, and we don't want to use them in this unit because they get confusing. This is something we can all agree on. What is blue? What is blue-green? What is green, etc. And the other big thing with the color wheel is that it lets us create and understand color harmonies. So the color wheel provides formulas or relationships, either word is, is appropriate, and they're consistently pleasing combinations. So when we're trying to figure out colors in our own artwork, we go to the color wheel and we think, well, if we want to use this color, what other colors will go well with that? Or if we look at something, we think this color is successful, you can, again, compare it to the color wheel and find out, well, which color harmony is this one using? And then you'll understand more about how colors work why some work together and why some don't work together. So the basics, we have only, there's more color harmonies in this, but we're only gonna focus on five in Design Basics. We do complementary, and that is colors that are crossed from each other on the color wheel. So red and green, but then also orange, blue, violet, purple. Any two opposing colors are complementary. Then analogous, those are colors that are all next to each other on the color wheel. You really don't wanna go more than like five for this one, because otherwise you're just becoming more than half the wheel, but any colors that are touching. So it can be two colors that are touching, it can be three, it can be four, it can be five. Um, any colors though that are touching on the color wheel, that's analogous. Triadic, this one you can see we have the primary colors. That's because triadic is any three colors that are equidistant on the color wheel. And I had said that the primaries are always equidistant, so we have red, and then we have one, two, three spaces. Yellow, one, two, three spaces. Blue, and again, one, two, three spaces. So if you rotate this around, any three equidistant colors on the color wheel are triadic. It's a very strong color harmony. Then we have split complementary. That's like taking a complementary color harmony, but instead of taking red and green, you split it on one side. So you have yellow, green, or blue, green, or actually and. That's how we'd have that color harmony. And again, this, these all rotate, so you can pick any. You can pick orange, blue, violet, blue, green. That would be another split complementary color harmony. And lastly is monochromatic. Mono means one. Chromatic means color. Chroma means uh, color. And this is any color harmony plus white and black, or any color plus white and black. 
So let's look at a, a few examples of these to really get to know them. Van Gogh was an artist I believe you've all heard of, and he was very well known for using color harmonies in so many of his works. So this is an example of a complementary color harmony because we have orange, our red orange and blue green. Those are like the very dominant colors in this in this portrait. So again, they're not the only colors because that would be a little insane, but they are the dominant colors that stand out, and that's what makes this little combination so effective. And this is another one of his works that shows analogous color harmony. This one has many colors, but they're all touching on the color wheel. So you have blue, blue-green, green, yellow, green, and yellow. And that's a very soft uh, color scheme. Very subdued. Since you don't have anything that's a high contrast, if there's nothing opposing itself, like this is a nice high contrast. It's a little more intense. This is a softer color palette because everything's touching on the color wheel. Triadic, this is another one that's very strong. So here we have red orange, blue violet, and then we have yellow green. Very strong color palette. And another Van Gogh work, one of his irises paintings. But super effective color harmony. Actually, you can also see if um, I don't have an example of it, but the Superman, a lot of superheroes will use triadic color harmonies. Red, blue, yellow is the Superman colors. That's because it's another bold, strong color harmony. This is a nice split complementary example. So here you have blue, and you have yellow orange and red orange. Now this actual depiction of the painting is not true to the original colors. They are more red orange in this field back here, but this is another great example of that split complementary color scheme. This is not Van Gogh's work, but this is just a very nice painting by an artist. Uh, and this is a great example of a monochrome because we have blue. This is watercolor. So you have blue that gets very light. You have blue that gets a little gray. You have blue that gets dark. A blue that was mixed with black. So any range of blues would all be monochromatic. Or any range of any one color. Monoch uh, monochromatic color harmony. Now the other thing we want to talk about beyond color harmonies is the values in color. So you understand values. Values is the range of black to white. And we've been doing just black to white. But now let's talk about color values. And we have specific names for them. So if you have a hue, and hue is just a fancy word for a color. The, the base color is just called, called a hue. So we have blue-green. That's our hue. Now if you start adding black, you'll eventually get really dark over here. And that's called a shade. So anytime you add shade to a color, um, or black two colors called a shade. You can kind of think of the idea of what shade is. Shade is obviously a shadow. So it's kind of an easy way to remember that shade is a hue plus black. And then we have when you add gray to a hue. That's called a tone. And an easy way to think of this is when you tell like a friend to tone it down and she's being a little extra and dramatic. So tone it down. You subdue a color by adding gray. And then tint, you add white. So you lighten a color by adding white. Now the thing is when you add black, gray, or white to a color, you're doing a couple of things. You're desaturating that color, that's what that word is, and you might have seen this on your photo editing tools, that you have a desaturation or saturation option. If you have saturation, that's intense color. Desaturation is um, not intense. It's making something ultimately black, gray, or white. And the pure hue is the most intense color. Sometimes people think that if they add white, they'll make something brighter. You're not. You're actually making Anything that adds black, gray, or white to it is making a color more dull, not more bright. You can make it lighter, grayer, darker, but the most intense color is the unaltered version. So to understand this a little bit better, what we're going to do is use our watercolors, and we're going to actually make a multi-step color wheel. So we have our 12 colors to start with. We have all of our primaries, all of our secondaries, and all of our tertiary colors. And then we have the shade, the tone, and the tint for each of them. Again, the shade you add black, the tone you add gray, and the tint you have white. So what we'll do in class, you're going to watch a little demo on how to do this watercolor because there's no white watercolor paint, but you'll see how we do that. Um, you'll be filling in a sheet just like this to look with your shades, your hues, your tones, and your tints. So we'll do a little demo on how to do that. 
that this is the introduction to color. So if there's anything you don't understand from this little video, I want you to email me or, check, or talk to me in class or talk to me over Zoom um, because we're going to be using quite a bit of tints, tones, and shades and color harmonies in our upcoming work.